Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it's Rock Rolls Walk Adventure with the beginning of my unboxing series for the new Hero Click set Captain America and the Avengers. This is going to be a uh, quite the endeavor as there are, as I got a whole two cases, not just two bricks, but two cases. That's four bricks. We'll start off when it comes to. Uh, the first case, we'll be doing a video, five boosters of video. The second case, we'll be revisiting that. So, let's get started, shall we? Obviously, the main theme of the set is Captain America and, well, the Avengers. Of course, it's not the only set, it's the only theme, um, as Stark Industries, Masters of Evil, Shield, the Thunderbolts, AIM, all rear their heads. There is also a, uh, A shifting focus uh, Iron Man run for those who might not ever have caught any anything from me concerning shifting focus stuff because it's not it's not something I use often. Um, shifting focus is basically a way to have a whole group of have multiple versions of one character that can be swapped in and out, usually to represent characters that have a lot of different, will have a lot of different tricks up their sleeve. Uh, a prime example of this, if I remember correctly, was in the World's Finest set. There was a shifting focus series on both Batman and Superman. And for example, you'd have a Batman who was more close combat focused, another one that was more range focused, and then you'd have one that was kind of a little of both, Super same with Superman. Anyways, so, first booster from the first case. Love that Alex Ross artwork. I actually might even just keep one of these boosters because I friggin' love that art. But I am also a sucker for Ross art in general, so, eh, you know. Um... Now, Sunday, I played a pre-release for the set and pulled um, Happy Hogan, Winter Soldier, Peggy Carter, one of the Captain Americas, uh, Ironheart, Trickshot, Nuke, and, uh, two generic industrial spies, and Ghost. So let's see what we get out of this. All right. For... Okay, now two, we got a prime right off the bat. We got Josiah X, Dario Agar, Spy Master, who was actually one of my high level wants. Oh, yeah. Nick Fury. And Baron Zemo. Okay. There are some uh, specific some new traits introduced in this set. We got there's the living legend trait, which uh, makes characters hard, to, really hard to kill. <clears throat> There's also Assembled Avengers and Assem Assemble Bolts and Masters, which can uh, remove tokens and or help and or affect uh, other various other things with, within the game. Um, you can either remove an action token from the from a character with the ability with the trait. Or you can give an action token to a, a hit target. 
Uh, there are also some other, there's also the espionage trait, which grants improved movement, uh, ignore, improved movement and targeting concerning Henry terrain. So, alright, so let's get started. And I think we'll start off with Josiah X. So, Josiah X. Um, Josiah X is. Uh, I'm one in the. I, I know there's a. I'm fairly certain there's a relation between him and Isaiah Bradley, but I cannot for the life of me remember what the relation is. I think it's basically that he's a. Uh, Either way, they're both super soldiers. Um, so Josiah comes in at 50 points. He has the scientist, soldier, and warrior keywords. Um, looking at his dial, well, he has no traits. Uh, we got a couple clicks of charge, a uh, click, couple clicks of sidestep, and a couple more clicks of charge. About mid dial on attack, we've got a few clicks of uh, precision strike. On defense, he's indomitable, so built in willpower, which I've always said is a nice thing. Uh, power wise, we start off with a click of. In a vulnerability followed by a couple clicks of uh, toughness, followed by a few clicks of initial deflection. On damage, we open up with the special power The Crew. Empower. Friendly characters that are adjacent or share a keyword with Joe's IX can, re can reduce penetrating damage. Oof. Nice. Then uh, that gives way to a couple clicks of regular Empower. And finally, a couple clicks of Close Combat Expert, which, to be fair, don't work with the two clicks of charge with them, but still not bad for Common Prime. Next up, we've got Nick Fury. So, Nick Fury comes in at 75 points, has a shield team ability, as well as the Howling Commandos, Shield, Secret Warriors, Politician, Soldier, and Spy keywords. Uh, we've got two traits. First off is the aforementioned espionage trait, giving him stealth, um, improved movement, and, and improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain. Then we got Director of Shield. Leadership. When Nick Fury uses leadership and succeeds, instead of the normal effect, you may generate a Captain America and the Avengers number, figure number four shield agent into an adjacent square or a square of hindering terrain within range and line of fire. Okay. Alright, so, looking at the dial, we open up with a couple clicks of running shot, followed by a couple clicks of sidestep. On attack, we open up with a couple clicks of energy explosion. We got nothing on the click, the sidestep clicks, and then we got uh, precision strike on the last click. He's indomitable, which does actually make sense for Fury. And he's got, he opens up with a couple clicks of toughness, followed by a couple clicks of uh, combat reflexes, followed by, on his last click, of a, the defense power, life model decoy. Stop. Mastermind. When this click is first revealed, after resolutions, roll a d6. Place Nick Fury up to that many squares away from his current square. Okay. Then on damage, we open up with a couple clicks of outwit, followed by a couple clicks of close combat expert, followed by one final click of outwit. All right. Next up, we've got Dario Agar. Dario here is the CEO of Roxxon Chemical, of the Roxxon uh, Chemical Corporation in uh, the Marvel Universe. He was also part of uh, Malekith's, one of Malekith's uh, generals during the War of the Realms story. Uh, anyway, Dario comes in at 50 points and has the Mystic Team ability, which means that when he is dealt damage. He deals one in a, by an attack. He de, the attacker takes one penetrating damage. Anyway, Dario has the aim, Hydra, monster, mystical, politician, and ruler keywords. Uh, we've got a trait, a, a costed trait, twenty five points. Legacy of Minos. Shape change. If Dario Agar would be KO'd instead. Replace him with the Avenger, Captain America and the Avengers number 27 minutes are on its last non-KO click and then roll a d6 and heal him 
equal to half the result. Protected pulse wave. Basically, with the protected pulse wave, what that means is, generally speaking, pulse wave would negate all other game effects. But with this, it's saying, oh, you got hit by pulse wave. Well, you still get to do that. Or, oh, you were KO'd through pulse wave. But you still get to bring the Minotaur. Looking at his dial, we got a full run of stealth. Then on attack, we open up with a couple clicks of telekinesis, followed by a couple clicks of incapacitate. On defense, we've got a full run of mastermind. Then on damage, we have a full run of the special power and endless supply of resources. Outwit, probability control. Opposing characters within five squares can't use team abilities. Oh man, that is amazing. That, that's great. That is really great. Next up, we've got Spymaster. Yeah, I know, he's, he's goofy looking. Spymaster comes in at 65 points, that's the Underworld team ability, as well as the AIM, Hammer Industries, Magia, Zodiac, and Spy keywords. He also has the Espionage trait, which makes perfect sense. He is a spy. Then we've got another trait, my Espionage Elite. During game setup, when establishing theme teams, you may treat the spy keyword as a named keyword. Unique modifier. Friendly characters with the spy keyword modify defense plus one if occupying hindering or obscuring terrain. Not too shabby. Alright, looking at the dial, we hope we got a full dial of sidestep. And, honestly, a deep dial anymore. Six, a whole six clicks. On attack, we open up with nothing, but that clicks into the special attack power. Anti-Iron Man weapons. Free. Choose the standard attack power. Spymaster can use that power until your next turn. If only he had all his first three clicks, though. On a defense, we open up with a few clicks of toughness, followed by a few clicks of combat reflexes. Then on damage, we open up with a click of shape change, followed by a couple clicks of range combat expert, followed by a couple clicks of exploit, or followed by a few clicks of, of exploit weakness. Pro tip, blade is exploit. And finally, we've got Baron Zemo. This is Heinrich Zemo, uh, who was the first Baron Zemo that readers were introduced to in the comics way back in the 60s. Also the founder of the, the initial founder of the Masters of Evil. Baron Zemo comes in at 60 points and has the Masters of Evil team ability as well as the Masters of Evil past scientist and soldier keywords. And we have three traits. First off is assemble bolts and masters, like, as I mentioned earlier. Once per turn, when Baron Zemo hits, after resolutions, you may roll a d6. On a 5 or a 6, if your force has three or more friendly characters with the Masters of Evil or Thunderbolts keywords, remove an action token from Baron Zemo or give an action token to a hit target. If your force has six or more characters with either keyword, do both. Next up we have Captain America, my mortal foe. Opposing characters that can use leadership or combat reflexes modify attack minus two when attacking Baron Zemo. Okay. Finally, trait-wise, we've got Adhesive X spread across the city and on the heroes. When beginning a move, opposing characters modify their speed value minus one and decrease their breakaway rolls by one that move. Unless they're occupying unless they're occupying hindering or water terrain. Okay. Looking at his dial, we've got a few clicks of running shot, followed by a couple clicks of, clicks of sidestep. Um, then we've got a few clicks of penetrating second blast, followed by a couple clicks of energy explosion. A few clicks of combat reflexes, followed by a couple clicks of willpower. A click of leadership, and then a whopping four clicks of outwit. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Let's get these out of the way a bit. And we'll get the word of the second on the second booster. And the characters with the living legend trait aren't the only ones that are hard to kill. There's also a new Hulk based on uh, Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk series. Ooh, oh god, you did get ourselves a duplicate. Alright, there's our cards. Then we've got ourselves a shield agent. 
Another Industrial Spy. Pepper Potts. Trick Shot. Hawkeye's brother. And speaking of, Hawk, of Hawkeye, we've got, well, Hawkeye. All right. So we've already seen the Industrial Spy, thanks to the, uh, the pre-release uh, Building a Team Edition. The Building a Team Pre-release Edition. Same with Trick Shot. So no need to go back over either of them. And we'll start off with... Oh boy. <clears throat> we gotta run our first our top clicks right quick. Of course Hawkeye's already ready for that. So we'll start off with the Shield Agent. This is the same figure that uh, Nick Fury can call in by a leadership. Um, okay, so the shield agent comes in at 15 points, has the shield team ability as well as the shield, soldier, and spy keywords. Two traits. First off is espionage, stealth, improved movement, improved targeting, and hindering terrain. Then what's my assignment? Free. Choose an adjacent friendly character with a shield keyword at a standard speed power that character can use except hypersonic speed. Shield agent can use the chosen power until your next turn. Okay. All right, so technically speaking, he's got four different dials, each one two clicks long. So we'll just go left to right. First one, um, we got starts off with a click of super senses followed by a click of willpower. Then on damage has two clicks of range combat expert. Next one has the same thing, super senses and willpower followed by two clicks of instead of range combat expert, close combat expert. Next up, we've got a special attack power, Icer, incapacitate with two targets, and then super senses and willpower. Finally, on the, la on the last dial, we've got energy explosion, and then super senses and willpower. And I get the way it basically works is when you you basically pick a uh, pick one of the four when you're for the force, and I also would presume to do the same thing with when calling them with Nick Fury. Alright, so next up we've got Pepper Potts, who appears to be a bit slanted, but yeah. Tony Stark's long suffering assistant and occasional romantic interest. Pepper comes in at 25 points, has the Avengers of Stark Industries keyword. And she also has a trait, proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Once per turn for all characters with this trait, when a friendly character named Iron Man makes an attack, you may roll, re-roll a 1 or a 2. If the re-roll is a 6, heal both Pepper Pouts and that Iron Man one click. Okay. Looking at her dial, we get a click of stealth followed by a few clicks of, of uh, sidestep. Uh, nothing on attack. On defense, we get a couple clicks of... Um, Energy shield deflection followed by a couple clicks of willpower, and finally on damage we open up with a couple clicks of perplex followed by a couple clicks of outwit. Okay, for twenty-five points, not too shabby at all. Next up we've got Hawkeye, who has the same sculpt and pose and everything as his brother. Honestly, I love, I really like the sculpt, so you know, I'm not complaining. Hawkeye comes in at 75 points, has the team player wildcard ability. Uh, he also has the Avengers, Shield, Thunderbolts, and Martial Arts keywords, as well as improved targeting. May make range attacks out of adjacency, including the target ad oppo adjacent opposing characters. Finally, we have two traits. First off is Assembled Avengers. Uh, it's the same as the Assembled Bolts and Masters, just with Avengers instead of Mas Masters of Evil and Thunderbolts. Next up, we have, not tricks, tactical. 
Precision Strike. Hawkeye may use his Precision Strike or Ranged Combat Expert even while targeting more than one target. Okay. Looking at his dial, we open up with a couple clicks of the special power Hawkeye. Running Shot, Sidestep, Stealth. Good combination. Okay. Followed by a few clicks of just Sidestep, then back to, on the last click, another click of Hawkeye. On attack, we open up with a couple clicks of Incapacitate, followed by a few clicks of Energy Explosion, and then back to Incap at the end. Defense, we open up with Willpower, switch to, then get a few clicks of Energy Shield Deflection, and then back to Willpower. On damage, we open up with a couple clicks of Leadership, followed by the rest of the dial being uh, Range Combat Expert. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Um, it might not replace my... Uh, Replace the one I've been favoring from the Age of Ultron movie set, but, you know, there's a distinct possibility that it might. Alright. Now to booster number three. Peggy Carter, Dr. Faustus, Minotaur, Black Panther, and Power Man. Alright, so... Dropping stuff. Huzzah! First off, we'll put Peggy with the rest of the duplicates. Dr. Faustus. Minotaur. Power Man. And Black Panther. Okay. Get us our, our, our top clicks. And... Oh, this is this is the Minotaur that uh, Dario Agar turns into. Even so, that's even better. Okay. Mm. Oh, sweet deal. It's it is who is first off we got Power Man. So Power Man is uh Eric Jostin. Best known for uh, using the identities of the size changing identities of Goliath and Atlas. Um, funny story when he back when he was Power Man briefly, well, there was somebody else using the name Power Man, and the two of them uh, got into a fight over it. Who was that other person using the name Power Man? None other than Luke Cage. And years later, when Cage became an Avenger, and the, the team, the Avengers team, fought Joss and Thunderbolts lineup, the Thunderbolts lineup Joss was a part of at the time, it was kind of brought up that uh, they were both they they once both fought over a code name that neither one of them was using uh, uses anymore. So okay, so Power Man comes in at sixty five points as the Master Duel team ability. The Master Duel team ability, by the way. Basically gives uh, colossal stamina. Um, we got the assembled bolts of masters trait, and then we have another trait: indestructible ionic energy. Power man takes a maximum of one damage from the first attack that hits him each turn. Okay. We've got the emissaries of evil, lethal legion, and masters of evil traits. Or keywords, I mean. Looking at his dial, we have a few clicks of uh, charge followed by a couple clicks of sidestep. On attack, we've got a few clicks of super strength. 
defense, we open up a couple clicks of impervious, and then we get a few clicks of toughness, and then on damage, we got nothing until the last couple clicks where we've got two clicks of uh, close combat expert. Okay, I mean, for, you know, for 65 points, it's not terrible. Next up, we've got Dr. Faustus. Dr. Faustus is a uh, long-running Captain America villain, and in fact, masterminded the assassination of, or helped to mas helped to set up the assassination of Steve Rogers after the Civil War. Dr. Faustus comes in at 45 points, has a Hydra team ability, as well as the Hydra, Skeleton Crew, and Scientist Keywords. Looking at his dial, we've got a full run of the special speed power Manipulate Sharon to assassinate Captain America. Mind Control. Stealth. When Dr. Faustus uses Mind Control after resolutions, he'll deal two penetrating damage to each character he hit that KO to another character with this action. On attack, we've got a couple clicks of uh, Precision Strike, and that's really it. On damage, we've got a few clicks of Mastermind, followed by a couple clicks of Willpower. On damage, we open up with a click of Shape Change, followed by a couple clicks of... of uh, Perplex, followed by a couple of hooks about wit. Okay, all right. Next up, we've got the Minotaur. Yeah. Let me look at that. Let me look at that that horned bastard. So the Minotaur comes in at 125 or 50 points. Has the aim, hydra, animal, brute, monster, mystical, and ruler keywords. Um, he also has a trait, Agar's Genius. When Minotaur starts the game, choose one. Power ability control or the Mystic's team ability. Minotaur can use the chosen power or ability this game. Uh, looking at the dial, we've got, a, we got four clicks of the special speed power, full gore. Charge. When Minotaur uses it, you may choose that he can only move in a direct path. If you do, he doesn't have his speed value, has improved movement, ignores hindering terrain, and improved movement, ignores and destroys blocking terrain, and modifies attack plus one for each three squares he moved. Oof. Yikes. That then gives way to Raider Charge. On attack, we open up with a couple of Quake, followed by... Five clicks of Blades, Claws, Fangs. Defense, he's got Indomitable. Def always a plus. Power-wise, starts off with a couple clicks of Invincible, followed by a couple clicks of Impervious, followed by a couple clicks of Invulnerability, and finally one click at the end of Toughness. On damage, he's got a full run of Battle Fury, so Shape Change is not going to be a problem for him. Next up, we've got... Black Panther. I haven't really looked. This is actually a dial. I know it. I know it's been out there for a, for a few weeks, but I just really haven't looked at it. I don't know why. Anyway, so Black Panther comes in at uh, eighty-five or fifty points. Has the Avengers, Illuminati, Wakanda, Ruler, and Warrior keywords, as well as improved movement, ignores elevated terrain. He also has a, a trait. He's got two traits. First off is Silent Hunter, giving him... Well, it's the same as the espionage trait. He's got stealth, improved movement, and improved targeting ignores hindering terrain. And he has a range of three, so that works. Then he's got assembled Avengers, so... Once per turn when he hits, after resolutions roll a d6. Five or six, if three or more characters of the Avengers keyword, I can either remove an action token from Black Panther or give a hit target an action token. If I have six or more Avengers, I can do both. Looking at the dial, we op we got we open up with a click of charge, then we got a couple clicks of flurry, back to charge, back to flurry, and then we finish up with sidestep for a couple clicks. On attack, we got five clicks of the special power vibranium daggers, blaze claws, fangs. When Black Panther's attack rolls doubles, he deals penetrating damage. That then gives way to a couple clicks of precision strike. On defense, he's indomitable. He's got four clicks of. Uh, Super senses followed by a few clicks of combat reflexes. On damage, we open up with a special power, I Never Freeze. 
Black Panther has protected outwit. Leadership. Opposing effects can't give Black Panther action tokens or modify his combat values. So he cannot be targeted by the by opposing assembled Avengers or assembled Bolts and Masters trait, nor can he, be, can he be targeted by opposing Perplex or anything else that might modify any other opposing effect that mo might modify his uh, combat values. That's that's not too shabby. That then gives way to a few clicks about wit, followed by a couple more clicks of I Never Freeze. Alright, next booster. So we got ourselves our ghost. Another nuke. And another happy Hogan. Well, uh, Wasp and Singularity. Now, full disclosure, I have no idea who Singularity is. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I'll get everybody on our top clicks. Well, that makes for our first duplicate rare. Ghost, nuke, happy Hogan. Okay, so we'll start off with Singularity. I like how she's translucent. Alright, so. Singularity comes in at 100 points, has the Power Cosmic Team ability, as well as the Avengers, Battle World, Other, and Cosmic Keywords. She's also got the Assembled Avengers trait. Um, looking at her dial, we've got a couple of clicks of Phasing, followed by a couple of clicks of Running Shot, followed by a couple of clicks of um, Hypersonic Speed. On Attack, we've got a couple of clicks of uh, yeah, Penetrating Psychic Blast, followed by a couple of clicks of Pulse Wave, followed by a couple of clicks of... Uh, energy. On defense we open up with a couple clicks of, of Impervious followed by four clicks of Defend and of note her defense stays at an 18 the entire run of her dial. Finally on damage we open up with a couple clicks of Probability Control followed by four clicks of Shape Change. Okay. Not too shabby. She's a flyer, so she can carry. Okay. Her, her speed's pretty. Her speed's honestly okay. Nothing spectacular. Next up, we will move on to Wasp. All right. So Wasp comes in at seventy-five or forty points. Um, looking at her. She's got the Avengers team ability as well as the Avengers, Lady Liberators, Wakanda, Celebrity, Scientist, and Spy keywords. Three traits. Assembled Avengers. 
espionage, so stealth, improved movement, improved targeting, injury train, which technically she already has improved movement because of the wings, but because of the flight, but yeah. And finally, wasp-sized annoyance. Opposing characters within five squares can't use improved targeting abilities. And trust me, that's very annoying. I know this because it got used on me. Okay. Looking at the dial, we open up with a click. We get a click of uh, sidestep followed by a click of running shot. Back to sidestep for a click and then two more clicks of running shot. On attack, we open up with a click of penetrating psychic blast followed by a click of uh, incapacitate. Back to penetrating psychic blast and then two more clicks of uh, incapacitate. On defense, we, we've got a, a few clicks of super senses followed by a couple clicks of willpower. Damage, obviously, she has a tiny size ability as well as three clicks of leadership followed by two clicks of perplex. Okay, all right. And on if you're starting at 40 points and 75 points, she starts on click three rather than click one. Very nice. All right, last booster for this video. And you know what, let's hope we get a, a super rare to this one. That would be it. That would be nice, you know. I'd feel kind of bummed if we didn't get one. Alrighty, let's see what we got. There was supposed to be a super rare in here. Yeah, there was supposed to be a super rare, and said I got two Nick Furies. We'll just set that aside. There's no point in actually going over it because, well, didn't actually get it. Well, we got a new clone. We got Isaiah Bradley. And one of the, uh, and the uncommon Iron Man. All right. So we'll start off with Isaiah Bradley. And yeah, Josiah X is the uh, prime of him. So that's, hence the similarities in the, the, the sculpt looking almost exactly the same. So Isaiah comes in at... 60 points, has the Pass and Soldier keywords as well as the Living Legend trait. The first time each game Isaiah Bradley would be KO'd, instead turn to his last non-KO click, then roll a d6 and heal him equal to half the result. Protected. Pulse Wave. Okay. Looking at the dial, we open up, we got a few clicks of charge, followed by a couple clicks of flurry. On attack, the his very middle click, the third, third click on his five-click dial, he's got super strength. Defense, he's got a dominable, so built-in willpower, always a plus, as I say. We got a couple clicks of the special po defense power of the other Captain America. Defend, toughness. Okay. This gives way to a few more clicks of just defend. Then on damage, we open up with a few clicks of empower, followed by a couple clicks of close combat expert. 
Alright, not too shabby. Next up we've got the Nuke Clone. So, we looked at Nuke in the, uh, um, after the pre-release, as I pulled him in the pre-release. Uh, Nuke was Weapon 7 in the Weapon Plus program. The basic idea, uh, codename Homegrown. He was tortured by Wolverine on multiple occasions, um, and to the point where during Vietnam, uh, Wolverine carved an American flag onto Nuke's face. Then um, he had pla like plastic coat, plastic co uh, plastic coating on his skin that would give him a degree of invulnerability. He was utilizing. Uh, Three single color, three three different pills for his moods: reds, whites, and blues. Reds would increase his aggression. Uh, I don't remember. I know that like blues would calm him down. I don't remember what I don't remember what each one did aside from the reds. So, um, but yeah, Nuke has come back on multiple occasions, and recently the pow a group a group of villains known as the Power Elite basically brought Nuke back and said, "Hey." We're really going to mess with you guys, and, yeah, clones. So the new clone comes in at 20 points, has the Underworld team ability as well as the Power Elite and Soldier keywords. we got two traits. First off is Burnout Virus. When new clone is KO'd by an attack or by the effects of a trait with this name, after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each character within three squares. At the end of your turn, for all characters with this trait, roll a d6. On a 4, 5, or 6, deal a friendly character named Nuke Clone one unavoidable damage. Then we got Power Elite. The power actions of opposing characters with an X squared are double power actions instead. X is the number of friendly characters with the, with the Power Elite keyword with different names. So you can't just run a swarm of, uh, of Nuke Clones and say, yeah, within... You know, say you got five new clones. Within five squares of each new clone, double power action. No, 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 no. It, it has to be nuke or new clone, and I'm not sure who else has power elite, to be perfectly honest. Looking at his dial, we get a couple clicks of running shot on speed, nothing on attack, then a full four clicks of uh, toughness, and then on the last couple of clicks, he's got uh, range combat expert. He's really nothing to write home about. Finally, Iron Man. Iron Man here comes in at 75 points, has the Avengers, Stark Industries, Armor, and Scientist keywords, and he's got three traits. First off is Shifting Focus. I am Iron Man. Free. If Iron Man began your turn on the map, replace him with another character with this trait. Okay. There's a common and a rare one as well, so... Each one with their own little, their own shtick. Then we got Assembled Avengers. And finally, Variable Weapon System. Free. Choose a standard attack power printed on the card of a character with the Shifting Focus I Am Iron Man trait on your sideline. Iron Man can use the chosen power this turn. That is probably one of the more interesting things I've seen done with a, uh, a Shifting Focus run. So looking at the dial, we've got a couple clicks of running shot, followed by a couple clicks of sidestep, followed by a couple clicks of uh, force blast. On attack, we open up with a couple clicks of energy explosion, followed by a couple clicks of penetrating sync blast, followed by a couple clicks of telekinesis. Defense, he's got indomitable. Three clicks of invulnerability, followed by three clicks of uh, energy shield deflection. Then his middle two clicks, he's got on damage, he's got two clicks of uh, ranged combat expert. That's not too shabby, to be perfectly honest. And I, if there's another one of these that has penetrating like psychic blast, then when he's on his top click, you can use that. So not too bad. Not too shabby at all. And you know what I've decided? I think we'll at least do one more booster. Maybe two. But which will also cut down the number of videos per case, so...
I guess we'll see what we pull, right? Okay, all right. Got ourselves another Isaiah Bradley. Got Roz Solomon. Another Power Man. We got Steve Rogers. Wow, that really. And another Shield Agent. That said, I do believe we will be opening another booster after this one. All right. Steve, Roz, and yeah. All right, so we'll start things off with Roz Solomon. Roz here comes in at 65 points, has the shield team ability as well as the as Guardian, Shield, Wakanda, Scientist, and Spy keywords. She also got improved targeting, may make ranged attacks out of adjacency, including the target adjacent opposing characters. And then we got two traits. First off is the espionage trait. Then we have Vibranium Bullets. When Roz Solomon, when Roz Solomon makes a range attack, her target's defense values can't be positively modified. Okay, all right. So, oh, you know, that was a, that's a really nice, uh, oh, wow, hmm, that's actually a nice little nail thing to use against Wasp, too, or any tiny character, because tiny size, gets, you get a plus one attack bonus, or a plus one defense bonus against range attacks, so, nice, all right, so looking at her dial, we open up with a couple clicks, or a few clicks of running shot, followed by a couple clicks of the special power Celestial Tech. Phasing Teleport. Once per game, when Ross Solomon uses it, she may carry an opposing character. Okay. Um, next up on attack, we open up with uh, a couple clicks of Penetrating Psychic Blast, followed by a few clicks of uh, Energy Explosion. On defense, we get a couple clicks of Toughness, followed by a few clicks of Energy Deflection. On damage, we open up with a couple clicks of Outwit. Uh, we got a blank click in the middle, and then we have two clicks at the end of Range Combat Expert. A little backstory on Roz. She's a, uh, she was an ally of Thor's, and she has, in fact, since been uh, recruited by Black Panther into the Agents of Wakanda. Oh my god, they really did just reuse that, didn't they? Jeez. All right. Next up, we've got Steve Rogers, who is on his who's on there backwards, just like the last time they used that sculpt. All right. So Steve Rogers comes in at fifty points. He's got the shield and Avengers team abilities, as well as the Avengers, Talent Commandos, Invaders, Shield, and Soldier keywords. We got two traits. First off is Assembled Avengers. Second off is Living Legend. Oh wait, three. Three traits. We'll take all the help help we can get if you're worthy. Leadership. During during force construction, you may choose a standard character of 50 points or less. That character loses its printed keywords for the entire game and then gains either the Avengers or Shield keyword. Choose one. Okay. All right. Interesting that they all they still lose that they lose all their. You know, that it takes away all keywords though. Still. As long as you got one, you're good, right? Looking at the dial, we've got a full run of sidestep, nothing on attack. On defense, we get a full dial of uh, combat reflexes. Then on damage, we open up with a couple clicks of perplex, followed by a few clicks of outwit. I mean, I, I guess. I, it's not terrible, I guess, but I, I think the main draw is making someone an Avenger. And I've already seen some scary uh, possibilities. 
Alright, moving on. Definitively last booster of the video, I swear. No matter how crappy a pull it is. Alrighty. Sam Wilson is Captain America, the captain. And one of the various versions of Citizen V. As well as another Roz Solomon. And another Singularity. And to be fair, I like the fact that that one is actually standing up, so yeah. All right. Okay. Ugh, get off. So we'll start off with Citizen, with Citizen V. All right, so... The V Battalion was a. I want to say they were active during during World War II for the Marvel Universe, with Citizen V being kind of who it's built around. Um, that being the case, Citizen V comes in at 55 points. He's got the V Battalion and Soldier keywords, as well as the Living Legend trait, as well as the tra another trait, Peak of Human Conditioning, Sidestep, and Toughness. Looking at his dial, we open a couple clicks of charge, followed by a couple clicks of uh, plasticity. Then on attack, we all we've got is a, are a couple opening clicks of Blight's Claws Fangs. On defense, we got a couple, couple clicks of willpower, followed by a couple clicks of uh, close of combat reflexes, followed by a click of regeneration. Finally, on damage, we open up a couple clicks of leadership, followed by a couple clicks of close combat expert. Okay. Next up, we've got the captain. Alright, so the captain comes from the era, the period when C. Rogers gave up being Captain America. It's kind of said, you know, based, uh, it's, it's actually a trait, one of the traits he has is, has it. I can represent the American dream without being a government agent. So, the captain comes in at 45 points and has the Avengers team ability as well as the Avengers and soldier keywords. Uh, he also has the living legend trait. And, like I said, Another trait, I can represent the American dream without being a government agent. At the, beginning of, at the beginning of the game, choose one to last this game. The captain loses the, super, the soldier keyword and gains the Marvel team ability of your choice that, is, that isn't uncopyable, or the captain can't have his copy values modified by other characters and can have his attack rolls re-rolled. Okay. Honestly, the best one is to pick the, uh, is pick a team ability. Looking at his dial, we've got a click of charge followed by... Five clicks of sidestep. On attack, we've got a single click, single solitary click of uh, um, that one that does the thing, uh, position strike. On defense, he's got a domital. One click of energy deflection, a few clicks of combat reflexes, followed by a couple clicks of defend. On attack, we on damage, we open with, we start off with nothing, but he picks up. Close combat expert, which then gives away to a couple of clicks of support. Okay. Finally, we've got Captain America. This is from back when Falcon was Cap. I think they reused this sculpt too from Nick Fury, Agent of Shield. So, 
Cap comes in at 75 points. He's got the Avengers, Shield, and Soldier keywords, as well as the assembled Avengers and Living Legends traits. Looking at his dial, we got a few clicks of uh, Running Shot, followed by a few clicks of Charge. On Attack, we start off with nothing, but he clicks into a few clicks of uh, Precision Strike. On Defense, we open up with... Uh, oh, first off, he's Indomitable. Then click, he, pick, he starts off with a click of, of Impervious, followed by a few... Rest of the dial having the special power, carrying on Siege Legacy. Super Senses, Toughness, Modify Defense plus 2 if Catherine America moved during your last turn. Okay. Then on Damage, we open up with a couple clicks of Leadership. We've got a blank click, followed by a couple clicks of uh, Empower, and then nothing on the last click. Alright, that's it for this portion of the unboxing. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal will be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.